Hello there, welcome to Splodge Apologetics. Thanks for joining us again. A little while ago I talked about control. Control by what? And we were talking about passage in Romans 8. And we're going today into Romans 8. But we're talking about a few verses later. But it's continuing in the same thought and the same line of thinking that Paul has as he addresses the Roman church. And so far in Romans, he's talking about the theology. He's talking about sin and the grace and the law. That we are no longer under law, but we are under the grace of God. But that is no license for us to sin. And we talked about that last time. Today we're looking at these first verses in Romans chapter 8. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I'm reading from verse 12. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Are you a child of God? Have you been saved? Are you born again by the Holy Spirit? By repenting of your sin and trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? Then you are a child of God. And because you have put away your sin, you are now in Him. And you are trusting in His righteousness and not your own. Which is a good job because we all fall short every day. If it's not in our actions, it can be in our words. And if it's not in our words, it can be in our thinking. We have to be very careful of how we think and how we speak and how we do things. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5 to 7, Jesus talks about outward things that people are doing. But he looks in the heart and he looks at what we are thinking, our motivation for doing things as disciples of God, as children of God. And he says, the law says this, but I tell you this, because that was what was in God's original thinking. For instance, the law says you should not commit adultery, but I say to you that anyone who looks at, in lust at a woman has committed a, adultery already in his heart. So we must be careful how we view people and how we look at men or women. We should look not on the body, not on the outward appearance, but on the spirit, on the soul, because most people in this world are lost. They are under God's wrath. Many are unaware of it. Many don't see the problem of sin. And that's why we should be pure in our heart, in our approach to them not judging them, thinking negatively about them because of their appearance, because of what they may or may not be doing, because of the clothes they wear, because of their appearance. They may be covered in tattoos, but we should never judge a person because they have those tattoos. They dress in a certain way because of their, their nature, their way in this world. And we should never look down upon them because remember we were once lost sheep we were once under God's wrath but now we are children of God we are children of light and it's not of our own doing it's the grace of God that we are saved and that's very important to remember we have no obligation to do what our sinful nature urges us to do we may have addictions to things we may have things that we loved to do when we were not christian think and things that are still part of our lives it may be something like smoking it may be something like looking at things that we shouldn't on or horror movies or things that are not good for the spirit for the soul and we may continue doing those for a long while but we are to put those things away because they are not good for our spirit and our soul so we have 
no obligation to our sinful nature anymore. We are in Jesus Christ. So we, we should think, what would Jesus do? Would he be doing the things that we want to do in our flesh? We have cravings of our flesh, but in, our whole, in the Holy Spirit that is within us, it is at war with our flesh. And we must allow the Holy Spirit within us to teach us by staying in his word and learning what we shouldn't be entertaining. Because remember as well, we are the temple of God. We shouldn't allow things in our bodies that go against our spirit, the Holy Spirit within us. That's why we need to pray constantly because temptation is on every side. When we go out anywhere, when we watch something on television, when we watch something on our computers or do some things, there's temptation all around. If something catches our eye, you might want to chase after it. Well, no, we should be thoughtful of what the word says. Should I entertain that? Should I allow that? Should I buy that? Should I take interest in it? Does it edify anyone? Does it edify myself to indulge in something like that? What would Jesus do? You used to be able to get bracelets, uh, little rubber bands to put your hand at your wrist that uh, said, what would Jesus do? We shouldn't need that. If we are in the word of God, we will know and learn what Jesus wants from us and what he and what grieves the Holy Spirit and what pleases God. So I encourage you to read Matthew chapter 5 to 7, the servant on the mount, and see what Jesus says about the law and what he originally intended. Because remember, Jesus is the word of God. He became flesh. And when the law came, it forbid certain things. Things like idolatry and stealing and murder and many other things that were happening all the time, but there was no law against it. People did what they thought what was beneficial to them. But the time came for the law to be delivered. When they came out of Egypt, the Israelites, the law had to be given. But now, in Jesus Christ, we are under grace. The law still applies. We uphold the law, but we are not under it. We are under the grace of God. And therefore, we should do righteously as Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. And we are to follow him, our chief shepherd. We are not to compare ourselves with other believers because they are, all have their own race and their own journey. But we have our own and we must compare ourselves to Jesus Christ. He is the prime example. And we are die, to die to ourselves and live for him. That's how we become righteous. We'll never be fully righteous in this life, but we can strive after it by trusting in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Saviour. And I encourage you to keep doing that. Stay in the Word and read Romans 8 for yourself. It's a great chapter. Living in the Holy Spirit. We are not of the world. We are in this world, but we are to be salt and light. And we are also to be proclaiming his gospel, his truth. And we can only really effectively do that if we're living in him and in his word and speaking the truth of God. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you soon. Bye.